13. I want to continue on what we were speaking about this morning, the power of a praying man of God as we look about the life here of Elijah. Elijah. So he's uh, been and confronted Ahab and told him that the Lord is withholding the rain and the dew as a result of judgment for the sin uh, of Israel and, and turning away from God for their backslidden condition and for their idolatry. And he told him to go to the brook Cherith. The brook Cherith reminded us of God's covenant. And there Elijah waited upon him. And uh, the ravens fed him morning and evening, brought him bread and meat, and sustained him until the brook dried up. And then the word of God came to Elijah again and told him to move on where to go. And so we break back into the passage here in 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thine hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel, and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not, go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and for thy son. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Amen. We know God will add his blessing to his own precious, precious word. So for those who were uh, here this morning as we continue to pick up the story about Elijah, and we spoke <coughs> in relation to Elijah's obedience to the Word of God, and we read in verse 7 where we finished this morning that the brook Cherith dried up because there had been no rain in the land. That's not surprising. God said there'd be no rain, so the brook obviously had to dry up. But thank God that the man of God didn't dry up, that he kept in touch and in tune with his God, the God indeed of Elijah. And so after the brook dried up, we see here, here's another lovely verse of Scripture. Uh, verse 8, it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, The word of the Lord came again. Uh, the word of God came to Elijah, just when he needed to hear from God for to give him this wonderful direction and guidance when the brook had dried up. And that's the wonderful thing about God. He's never too late. He's always right on time. He meets thee at your point of your need. And we see here that Elijah, I see Elijah's patience, how he tarried at this brook and waited upon his God. That's a wonderful lesson for each one of us, that we would have the patience to wait on God. And that's one of the wonderful lessons that all God's servants must learn. You have to learn to wait on the Lord. You have to learn to be patient and let God work all things out according 
to the purpose of his own will and pattern for your life. We said this morning that Elijah's destiny was carmel and that God guides you one step at a time. And so Elijah had been prepared of God. God had been working in his heart. He spoke to him to go and show himself to Ahab. He did that according to the word. He did what God asked him to do. Then God spoke again when he was obedient, told him to go to the brook Cherith to wait there and the ravens would feed him. Sure enough, one blessing leads us on to another. It opens up the door for God's blessing. The windows of heaven are open. The Spirit of God is poured out. Imagine the ravens coming with meat and with bread, these flesh-eating creatures, the, these uh, scavenger birds coming and feeding God's servant. What a miraculous event uh, that he could change the nature, uh, even of the very animals, to do his bidding, to do his will. And uh, so Elijah, in obedience to the Lord, is receiving the blessing. And the wonderful thing about God is you'll never know where he leads you. You never know where he'll take you. And so the word of the Lord came when the brook dried. Elijah was patient. He was waiting, waiting on the word of the Lord, and God didn't disappoint him. I'm sure as Elijah sat there and seen the last little uh, dribble of water drying up out of the brook, he knew that God would come. And sometimes God does that in our Christian experience. He brings us right to the very point, the very point of trusting and trial that we're able to see God's mighty hand at the moment of deliverance. And sure enough, the word of the Lord came to the waiting prophet. What, what an encouragement tonight uh, for those of us that wait upon the Lord. The word of the Lord will come. The word of the Lord will surely come. The word of the Lord will not fail. It's impossible for God to fail. Impossible. And as this man, Elijah, as God's servant is waiting, surely the word of the Lord came. And could I encourage our congregation this morning, keep waiting uh, and this evening, keep waiting because the word of the Lord, it'll come. And it come here to Elijah. He's a patient man. And the lovely thing about the word of the Lord was he says, arise. It's time to arise. Time to leave this place, Cherith. Arise, he says. And he says, go. Go to, the, to the, a place called Zarephath. There's a lovely verse in Psalm 27, 14 that the Lord has given me recently for I'm praying about a particular situation. And Psalm 27, 14 says, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he, Jehovah, shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That's a test for me. And I'm waiting patiently on the word of God. Wait on the Lord. What a blessing. What a privilege. I think today in, in the evangelical church, we don't really know what it is to wait on God. We had a powerful prayer meeting on Friday night past. Fourteen of us waited on God and He didn't disappoint us. Waiting on God. And, and as Elijah waited here, the word of the Lord came. I want you to notice here the timing of the word. It came just at the right time. The timing of the word. Whenever the Lord uh, called Monday and I to leave the south of Ireland and to return north and wait, it came at the right time. We had to arise. We had to leave a church. Uh, we're pastoring it for four and a half years. And we had, to, we had to take up sticks. We had to gather up the tent, as it were. And we had to move and wait upon the Lord. And I knew nothing about you folk here, and you knew nothing about me, but God knew. God knew. Isn't that wonderful tonight? God knows what's best for us when we wait upon Him. Oh, the thrill and the romance 
of waiting upon God. From nearly from one end of Northern Ireland to the other. The timing of the word, he comes at the right time. You remember Martha and Mary? They said, Lord, you're late. <laughs> You've showed up. You're late. You're too late. The Lord Jesus says, I'm just right on time. Four days late, but right on time. And he brought Lazarus out of the tomb. God doesn't do late. God does right on time. And so the word of the Lord come to Elijah. And then we see here the clarity of the word. For he told him exactly where to go to. And you know some people struggle with finding the will of God for their life. It's, it's not difficult. Not difficult at all to find God's will. We see here the clarity of the word. The word of the Lord, he says, go to Seraphath and side on. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, and some people, you know, they don't really apply this the way, it, the way it's written. You need to apply Scripture the way it's written. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You need to fulfill the conditions. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That, that means every part of your being to trust the Lord. Don't lean on your own mental faculties or capacities or intellectual knowledge. Don't lean on your own understanding, but in all your ways. Not everybody acknowledges God in all their ways. They'll just acknowledge God in some of their ways. But the Lord says it has to be all of your ways. And if you'll do that in all of your ways, the promise is he shall direct your steps. Do you remember the word this morning? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. The, a man's heart deviseth his way, but the Lord directeth his steps, it says in the book of Proverbs. So this is the wonderful blessing here that, that Elijah was so guided and so directed through the clarity of the Word of God. That, that's how I've been guided for almost 30 years. People have come with words of prophecy to me. They've spoken prophecy into my ear. And I'm not against uh, prophecy, but I don't move on prophecy. I move on the Word of God. God's Word will guide you. God's Word is, is, is to instruct us, to lead us, and to guide us. And you can find God's perfect will for your life. And the Word of God is so precise. It's, there's such precision in the Word of God. It's like He has blessed every dot and every tittle. It, it is so precise and it is so unique. It's not, it's not a book. We, we call the Bible a book. Friends, it's a revelation from the heart of God. The Word of God is Christ. It's, it's, it's the living person, Christ. We, we have the living word of the living God. Don't just treat it like a book. Treat it as a letter from the heart of God to the soul of his people. Treat God's word. It's so precious to have this blessed truth. And God speaks through it. If someone was to strip me off my Bible, he, he might as well slay me. And this is why I love to hide the word of God in my heart. God has spoken to me many times without the Word of God, but He has spoken that Rima Word into my heart, the Word of God that I've hidden in there. It's wonderful. The clarity of the Word, go to Seraphath and Sion. So Elijah arises and he goes. He knows where it is in the Mediterranean coastline. And we see here the peace of the word. He, he says, I've commanded a widow woman to feed thee there. It's not lovely. This, this widow woman, and you know, widows in the Bible, the, 
uh, these, dear, these dear widows, you know, their husbands are dead, the breadwinner is gone, and to be a widow in the scriptures, you know, it wasn't a very pleasant thing to be, and she's got a young son. And God uses the most uh, unexpected people to meet the needs of his servants. Many's a widow's house I've been blessed in as I've missioned and worked and labored for the Lord in the south of Ireland. Many's a widow's home I have been blessed in. And we see the peace of the word. You see, when God speaks and you're in the will of God and, and as this word come to Elijah, there was a peace. There's a peace comes with the power of the word. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, I will keep him in perfect peace. His mind is stead on me. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. And there's a peace. And when God has, has spoken into our hearts, and the same with you uh, over the years, when he gives us his word, uh, and you just know it's the word of God, it comes and ministers peace peace into your heart. It's a peace at times that can't be explained because it's supernatural. It's divine. It's the, it's the peace of God. It's, it's a pure peace. It's a perfect peace. It's the peace that passes all understanding because it's the peace of God. Sadly, many today don't have peace uh, their peace rests in their possessions, and, and when possessions fail and possessions go, then the peace goes. As our dear sister Ethel often prays, when we have Christ in the vessel, we can smile at the storm. Hallelujah. Peace, perfect peace. In this dark world of sin, the blood of Jesus whispers peace within. Have you got that peace tonight? The peace of Christ in your heart? I trust you have. The clarity of the word, the peace of the word, and the provision of the word. He says to his servant Elijah, he says, behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. There's the provision of God's word. I have commanded. When God speaks, it shall be accomplished. When God commands, it shall stand forth. This word command, it's as sure and as strong as when he spoke into the Red Sea and part of that mighty ocean when the waves became walls and the riverbed that was saturated for thousands of years uh, with the deluge of the bottom of the sea was dried up like dust by the command of the power of the Word of God. What a mighty God. We, when God speaks, God supplies. Through a little woman, Thank God for the little women in this church. Maybe you just feel tonight, look, okay, I'm not much use. I'm a widow. I, I, I could do nothing for God. Don't you believe it? Don't you, don't you believe that for one moment? God can use you in a mighty way. He loves to take the insignificant. And the little things that others would pass over he didn't say, Elijah, arise and go to the king of Sidon and into the palace. And I've commanded uh, the servants of the king in there to feed you from all the resources of their treasury. No, that's not the way that God works. For God has chosen the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And God uses the weak things to confound the things that are mighty and the things which are not, to bring to naught the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence, 1 Corinthians 1, 26. That God will get the glory. Can you see how God works? 
Maybe you're a widow here tonight. Be encouraged. God has not passed you by. He has not passed you by. So there's the provision of the word. He said, I have commanded and Elijah on his journey, and this is the wonderful thing about when we walk with God, that as he knew the ravens had fed him, so he would know that the widow would sustain him because one victory uh, with God strengthens our faith and leads us on to another. And you should come to understand that as God has brought you through one trial and brought you into victory, so he'll bring you through another. He'll not fail you. And we see the provision of the Word. And we see the power of the Word of God. For God spoke it. He can do nothing greater, only nail his testimony till his own mask by his own Word. When God speaks. This is the lovely thing about this wonderful Bible. It's the heart of God. You ever looked at it like that before? It's the heart of God. God's words on white paper and blank ink. The heart of God. And you can trust the power of the word. He can change the nature of the birds. And it's only the Holy Spirit that can change the nature of the human heart. Change that sinful nature. There's a picture in the Word of God about what the Spirit of the Lord can do in a heart that's ravaged by sin. You take those ravens, just to look back for a moment. They're natural scavengers. They come from the, from the crow family. Uh, they, they'll feed on rotten flesh. They'll eat anything. And yet the Spirit of God changed their nature. You know, that's what happened to me. I got a change of nature. And the Lord Jesus came in by the cleansing, sanctifying power of the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he changed my nature. And he gave me his nature. He he. He placed his nature within me. And now the Spirit of God dwelleth in me, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ. And so the Lord was touching this, this widow woman. God was going to touch her heart, even though she didn't even know a thing about it. Isn't it amazing? This wee creator, such an awful state, Judgment has affected Syria as well. The judgment of God has come. No water, no blessing, no life. The suffering that sin brings on the land, others are affected. But God's seen this wee woman. There's a picture of the love of God for the, for the heart of the sinner. He set his love upon this woman. He's going to meet her needs through his servant. And there's the power of the word. There's lovely verses in Jeremiah 32, 27. He says, Behold, I am the Lord. That is my name. Is there anything too hard for me? Is there anything too hard for me? And of course, Jeremiah says, there's nothing too hard for the Lord. He says, I'm the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? There's nothing. For with God, all things are possible. All things are possible with our God. And we see here then in this passage, so he arose and went to Seraphath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was gathering of the sticks. There he met her right away. He didn't have to go searching for her. 
the Lord had a right there before him. This is the wonderful thing about God. We don't, know, go, we don't need to go seeking it out. God will have it there in front of us. It'll be there for us. When we're in the will of God, listen, it's, it'll dovetail together just like a key in a lock. It'll fit perfectly. God's timing was perfect. Whenever Elijah had made his way to Seraphath, there was the woman before him. God's appointed time. And what a lovely picture it is here. And then we see here that the faith of this little uh, widow woman. I want you to see her faith here. God speaks to her through the servant Elijah. And uh, she's gathering these sticks. And Elijah calls her and says, Listen, fetch me, I pray thee, a little water and a vessel that I may drink. Now, Elijah is asking here for her most precious possession. I want you to see that. Remember water, there's a drought. Three and a half years. Well, not quite at this stage, but there's no water. The brooks have dried up. And he's asking of her something that's precious. This is the way God comes now to challenge He's asking for something of you that's precious. What's your most precious possession? And he says to her, give me a little water and a vessel that I may drink. Uh, Elijah, he's thirsty, he's parched, he has come a long way. And as she was going to fetch it, so we can see here that there's love in her heart. But she's prepared even to go and give this man a little drink. The Lord Jesus says, One cup of cold water given in my name shall receive reward. Isn't that marvelous? Just, just a cup of cold water given in my name shall receive a reward. And here's this widow woman. She's so little, but she's going to fetch for the servant of God. Here's a little picture of her heart. And so, she's going to fetch it. And then Elijah calls her again and says, uh, Bring me, I pray thee, a, a morsel of bread in thine hand. Have you a wee bit of bread in the house? Could you give us something to eat? I'm famished. So he's looking at her bread underwater. And sometimes you see God will test us to the very extremes. Will you give all to me? That's the claim of the cross upon your life. Take up the cross and follow me. Give me your life unconditionally. The Lord Jesus says, I want all you have. That's the claim of the cross on the life of the sinner. If you want all of God, he must have all of you. He must have all you have. It belongs to him. This is the price. And we see this woman, she says then, in verse 12, as the Lord thy God liveth. So she obviously knew that Elijah was a man of God. He's dressed in the, in the camel skin coat, a lather girdle around his waist, and maybe a little mantle over his shoulder. But she knew this man carried a presence. This man, Elijah, carried an ointment. He most likely had the staff in his hand, and she knew this is God's servant, this is a man of God. When this widow woman here, uh, she said, as the Lord thy God liveth, she says, I have not a cake. I don't have any bread. They call, they call the wee barley loaf a cake. She says, but I've got a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. That's what you need for making bread, flat bread in Israel. She says, and behold, I'm gathering two sticks or a few sticks for a wee fire that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. It was the last bit she had. It was the last wee, wee handful of meal that she had in the barrel on the little cruise, a little wee bottle of oil. That she's just a little drop of oil. The olive berry oil the virgin oil to make the bread. 
And uh, Elijah, the servant of God, said unto her in verse 13, Fear not. Fear not. I love that when that comes into the scriptures. Do you know one of the biggest problems for believers? Fear. Fear to trust God. The devil loves to smite the believer with fear. Fear of the future. Fear of the unknown. Fear of tomorrow. Fear of next year. The word of God says, don't trouble yourself by tomorrow. Sufficient are the things for today. Fear not. What words of comfort. And this, this dear lady here, I want to see this, this picture here uh, in verse 13. That she threw her heart around these, these words. That she embraced them as truth. That she appropriated them and applied it to your situation and into your life and into your soul and into your heart. She embraced the word of God. It's called appropriating the promises. It's called taking God at his word. And Elijah says, my dear, fear not, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first. Make me a little cake first. Why is this? Because the word of God says it's God first. We have to put him first. You have to trust him first. You'll not have assurance of salvation unless you put him first, unless you give him first place in your life, unless he's first. Because if he's first, he's Lord. He's Lord over all. You've got to put him first. And this was the test. Will you put him first in your life? Is he first in your life? And so here was the challenge to the widow but to, to put God first. And then the promise was following here. If you put God first, he says, and after make for thee and for thy son. How could she do that if she only had enough for one? See, the Lord says that the word needs to be mixed with faith. Faith. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, Matthew 6 and 33. And if you read the verses that went before it, he says, listen, don't be worrying about a coat, what you'll wear, or shoes on your feet, or bread for your table. He says, it's not Solomon was arrayed in all his glory in the Lord. He has decorated the fields and the grass and the flowers he says he has supplied it all for the birds and how much more will your heavenly father meet your need? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. There's the sufficiency of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. All these things. Our Lord Jesus, he's able to meet all your need tonight. Whatever it is, he can meet it all. He's God Almighty. If you have the faith to believe it. And so Elijah saying, Put me first. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, The barrel of meal shall not waste, Neither shall the cruise of oil fail, Until the day that the Lord has sent rain upon the earth. There's the word again. The word of the Lord. He has promised to send this rain upon the earth. I see here the faith then of this widow woman. She's exercising now her faith. It says in verse 15, and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. She went and did. Do you see her obedience? She took Elijah's word, the word of God by faith, 
and she appropriated it and she applied it and the Lord promised that he was going to meet all her need. And so he did. He met her need. Have you a need tonight? Are you saved tonight? He can meet that need. Do you need encouragement tonight? He can meet that need. Whatever your need is tonight, the Lord Jesus, he can meet that need. Not only will the Lord sustain you, but the Lord will keep you. He'll sustain you, he'll keep you by his glorious, mighty, mighty power. He has promised here to meet the daily needs. He says, this, this barrel of meal, it'll not fail. It will not waste, the oil will not fail you, till I send rain again upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he, that's Elijah, and her house that was her little boy, did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Not powerful. It's impossible. For God to fail, when you take him at his word, he is no disappointment. But this dear lady had to put God first. Just in the few moments that remain, let me just, I'm obviously not going to get all this covered this evening. We'll speak about it again when we're back the following Sunday week. The Lord, I mentioned to you this morning about Elijah when he sent him to Cherith, that Cherith speaks of covenant, that God is a covenant-keeping God. And Seraphith in the scripture means it's a crucible, a crucible. A crucible is a place where metal is refined where the solid is turned into liquid and the dross is purged out. And God does refine his servants. And he has brought this man Elijah now into this crucible. And God does that in the life of his saints. A crucible is a place where God refines his vessels. Now, God knows when Carmel is coming. That's in the heart of God. That's ordained of God. Elijah didn't know uh, how long the drought was going to be. He just knew that it wouldn't, be, uh, it wouldn't be raining again until the Lord gave him the word until he spoke it out. He didn't know the timing. That was hidden from God. Sir, those things are with God. God is sovereign. He knows the hour. He knows the day. He knows the timing. He knows the moment. And he knows the place. He's God Almighty. So Elijah, why trouble thyself and why worry thyself? Just wait on God. But, but God is preparing this man for his destiny, so he's taking him into a crucible, a place of refining. Let me share just a couple of scriptures with you. In uh, Isaiah... Listen to this. In Isaiah 48 and 10, he says, Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Not some word. Behold, I have refined thee, but not with silver. I have chosen thee in the furnace of affliction. Elijah is a chosen vessel, chosen of God for a particular destiny. God knows what he's about. And he says, Behold, I have refined thee. For mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. Elijah was no glory hunter. 
Elijah didn't want his name up in, up in light. And he wasn't interested in, in writing books and autographing them and signing them. And get it. He's not interested in public life like that. Elijah's just interested in doing the will of God and bringing the Word of God. God's refining a man. Why would God place Elijah into such a crucible? I'll tell you why. Because when Elijah came out the other end, he knew that it'll only be God that'll do it. He'll break him. He'll crucify him. He'll mold him. He'll make him. He'll sift him as wheat. He'll bring the dross out of his life. He'll take every, every trace of pride out of his heart that he'll know it's God. God. So he's brought him in into God's melting pot. You see, you could have missed that. Perhaps there are times when you've been in the crucible. These trials, these tears, and you've proved God's reality in your life. And he's brought you through, and you'll know it's him. And he gets all the glory in your life. You're not full of your own self-importance or your own pride. No. And God is doing a mighty work. Mount Carmel indeed was Elijah's destiny. But friends, you'll never get to Carmel until you've been to Seraphath. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Elijah obeyed. Remember what I read to you this morning in the book of James. Elijah was a man with like passions, like as we are. What does that mean? He felt like you. He's human. He's not a superman. He's a human being. And after his great victory, we, 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 you know, look what happened to him. He went into the depths of depression. After his destiny was fulfilled, and, and how he went into the depths and into the deeps. He's not immune from trouble, and nor are you, and neither am I. But he's still... A, He's still the God of Elijah. Your God's Elijah's God. Elijah's God's my God. The same power. You'll never get your Carmel without your Seraphat. I know these are deep teachings, but this is the way God works. The Lord Jesus had his Zarephath in the wilderness 40 days and 40 nights. But then he come out in the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no easy route when you're going through with God, but it's the best route. It's the safest route. It's the surest route. The word of the Lord to the widow, he promised her this meal shall not fail. Friends, God has tied his word to his provision. You can't divorce the word of God. God has tied his word to his provision. This is the lovely thing about the word of God. 
He has tied it. He has covenanted to it. He promised the word of God is tied to his provision. He says, if you'll obey the word, I'll provide the meal and I'll provide the oil. Dear friends, if you'll just obey and leave it all with God, he'll provide all you need. It's tied to his word. It's impossible for God to fail. And that's why we see, and I better finish, the obedience of the widow. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. You see, the promises depended upon her obedience. I couldn't emphasize that enough. I have been emphasizing that from I came to this church. If you want to know the power of God in your life, you need to obey the word of God. There's no other way that God can release his blessing into your life because he has tied his hands to his word. And he'll not break his word and he'll not make a difference for you. But if you will do your part, God is a covenant keeping God. He will do his part. And this woman obeyed. Praise God. And if you'll obey the word of God, that will open up the barrel of meal and the cruise of oil for all of your blessings, for all of your needs, whatever you need. It'll release the power of God. Well, it wasn't that this meal could supernaturally itself multiply or it wasn't supernaturally that this oil could increase itself. It needed the touch of God upon it. A miracle. Every morning. Every morning. The barrel of meal was like a big clay water pot with a lid on it. But you come with her wee cup. But you had to go right down into the bottom. take up the provision for the day. And she had to get her wee, her wee cruise of oil. Wasn't it the last bottle now? We clay vase. You pull out the wee plug and pour it in to the oil, into the meal and give it a wee stir. The provision of God. And she at, and Elijah at, and her son at, and were satisfied. And she come the next day. The man of God promised that if I give Elijah first son, that he'll meet our needs. Mama, I'm watching you. Let's see. Luke, son. The meal. And the oil. Day after day after day. Word of God can not fail. Hallelujah. Standing on the promises. You could have sung that, couldn't you? I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my King, through eternal ages, let his praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and sing. 
I'm standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, I'm standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. What a Savior. What a mighty God we have. Feeding the widow. Feeding her son. Feeding her servant. And he's going to feed the land again. Oh, hallelujah. Some of these mighty days. When Zarephath, when the days of Zarephath are over, Carmel's coming, hallelujah, hallelujah. And I'll not be worried about that iron clock. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm glad I'm standing on the promises widow with the word. When you've got the word, he'll never fail. Let's bow in prayer. Jack's feet now. Father, we thank thee for the gracious and glorious word of God. We thank you, Lord, that your word faileth not. When we bless you, Lord, we can trust you, for thou art truly an awesome and a mighty God. We thank you that Elijah's God is our God, forever and forever. And we thank thee, Lord Jesus, that you have promised I will never leave thee. I will never forsake thee. Thank you, Lord, we can trust your word, trust your promises as we obey the living person, Christ. And so, our Father, thank thee for your presence and thank you for the good word of God to our hearts today. We give you thanks, Lord, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. We're going to sing our closing.